Today, we're diving into the controversy surrounding one of the most popular oat milk brands on the market, Oatly. You might have a carton of Oatly in your fridge right now and think you've found the perfect alternative to traditional dairy milk. But have you ever wondered if this oat-based goodness is truly as wholesome as it seems? Well, my friends, you're in for a captivating journey as we dig into the controversies, scrutinize the science, and separate fact from fiction. From its rise in popularity to its critics' claims, we're here to ask the million-dollar question. Is Oatly bad for you? Oatly has been around since the mid 90s, making it one of the oldest players in the plant milk space. It markets itself as a nutritious and environmentally friendly option, but recent claims have raised some alarm bells. A 2021 tweet that went viral called Oatly Super Sugar Grain Juice Cut with Canola Oil. The author listed several unsavory claims about Oatly's nutritional content and health effects, and this is where the controversy began. One of the major concerns is the sugar content in Oatly. The process of making making oat milk creates a sugar called maltose. Oatly contains about seven grams of maltose per serving, which has a high glycemic index of 105. That's almost two times higher than table sugar. Because of this, some people are concerned that Oatly can potentially cause unhealthy blood sugar spikes. In response, Oatly argued that their original unflavored oat milk contains less sugar than cow's milk. However, critics point out that the high glycemic maltose in Oatly is more problematic than the sugar in cow's milk, which has a lower glycemic index. Another issue is the second ingredient in Oatly, canola oil. Some health and nutrition experts argue that canola oil is unhealthy and linked to various health problems, including memory impairment, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and decreased brain function. They claim that Oatly's use of canola oil is a concern. Oatly defends its use of canola oil, stating that it has a great nutritional profile and is low in saturated fats. They highlight that they only use non-GMO expeller-pressed canola oil, but critics still question its inclusion in the product. Another concern with Oatly's nutritional profile is the quality of its vitamins. Oatly fortifies its milk with various vitamins, including vitamin D. However, they use vitamin D2 instead of D3, which is more easily absorbed by the body. Oatly argues that the Swedish food agency considers D2 and D3 equally effective, and they chose D2 because it's a vegan friendly option. Apart from the nutritional concerns, Oatly has faced criticism for its marketing tactics. They launched a climate marketing campaign claiming to generate 73% less carbon dioxide than milk. However, this claim isn't based on peer-reviewed studies and only applies to their barista edition oat milk compared to full fat cow's milk. Other Oatly products and non-full fat cow's milk were not included in the comparison. Oatly also prides itself on its fiber content. We need healthy prebiotic fiber to feed the beneficial bacteria in our gut so that they can flourish and keep our digestive system functioning in tip-top shape. Oatly once called its fiber the most amazing fiber in the drinkable world and even referred to it as strong and handsome. However, one serving only provides two grams of fiber. That's 8% of the daily recommended fiber intake for a woman and 5% for men. Men. Hardly anything to write home about. In addition to the nutritional and marketing concerns, Oatly has faced accusations of being linked to rainforest deforestation. In 2020, Oatly sold shares to private equity firm Blackstone, which was allegedly linked to Amazon rainforest deforestation. Blackstone denied these allegations, stating that the company invested in a Brazilian infrastructure company that had no involvement in deforestation. While some of the criticism against Oatly is understandable, there have also been some claims that are a lot more myth than fact. One viral claim stated that adding 12 ounces of Oatly to a cup of coffee was like adding a tablespoon of sugar. However, a cup of coffee is only eight ounces and most people don't consume a cup and a half of Oatly at once. If you're adding a little Oatly to your morning coffee, you're likely using less than a serving, which has much less of an effect on blood sugar. It's also important to keep in mind that the effects of sugars in food and beverages on blood sugar levels depend on what else we consume in the same meal. Oatly was also referred to as the new Coke in a viral article. However, 
Oatly clarified that while an eight ounce serving of Oatly has around the same amount of calories as a 12 ounce can of Coke, almost all of the calories in Coke come from sugar. In fact, a 12 ounce can of Coke has more than five times as much sugar as a serving of Oatly. So is Oatly bad for you? It's not great but it's not awful either. It's important to recognize that Oatly's nutritional profile and environmental impact are more nuanced than the headlines suggest. But here's our biggest takeaway. The controversy surrounding Oatly highlights the importance of being critical consumers. Marketing tactics and misinformation can distort our understanding of supposedly healthy foods. Relying on scientific information rather than catchy campaigns is crucial for making informed decisions about our health. And if you're curious about some alternatives to Oatly, consider brands like Willa's, Malk, or Three Trees. These are all brands that use clean ingredients and have great reputations. You can also explore our database of over 400 non-dairy milk products for more suggestions. The link is in the description. That's all for today's video. Remember to stay informed, question what you hear, and make choices that align with your values and health needs. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.